round of applause for the worship team. Aren't they awesome? All right. How's everybody doing this morning? Good! Hey, I'm Mr. Scott. You probably remember me from a couple months ago. I was, I was here teaching you guys. And I've got my helper here. Anyone know her name? Faith. Yeah, you guys know her. She's going to help me with a little project. She's going to have a seat right over here until we get started on that. I'm going to flip on my light because we have a special, oh. special effects today. Yeah. Guys, did you know it's only 20 days until Christmas Eve? Yeah. All right. I need to hear. I need some people to raise their hands and tell me some of their favorite things to do around Christmas. Right here. Put up the decorations. Pray to God. Be thankful for what Christmas means, right? Yep. Yeah. Make a gingerbread house. That is so fun to do. Yeah. Build a snowman. Snowball fight. Oh, you guys got really good ones. What do you have? Uh huh. All right. What do we got? Open the presents. Yes, yes, yes. What do you got, buddy? What's your favorite Christmas time? Capture Santa Claus. Yeah, catch my go. You guys got a really good one. What do you have? Spending time with your family. Thank you, everybody. That's one of my favorite things to do, too. And that makes, that makes me think of one of the things I like to do with my family is drive around and look at Christmas lights. Anyone else like to do that? Yes. It is super fun. And that reminds me of our series, which is called... Our series, which is called... Okay, so now, Faithy, I need your assistance here. When she plugs this in here, this light, who does that remind you of? Jesus! Jesus, yes. Because Jesus is the living word. Jesus is the living word. Yeah. So, you guys know that we've been doing our roadmap, road trip through the whole Bible, right? I was there at the very beginning when we started Construction Zone, and then we went into a detour. And in that detour, uh, what did Adam and Eve do in the garden? They, yes, they sinned against God, didn't they? They disobeyed God, right? And so they were put out of the garden, and some angels with flaming swords were there to protect it, kept us out. And since Adam sinned, we have been in darkness, right? Now, has anyone ever done a cave tour before? Yes. Who's done a cave tour? Yes. Okay, now, on the cave tour, who has had them turn out the lights? You ever done that where they turn out all the lights? You know what? You can't even see in front of your hand in front of your face when they turn out the lights. It is like pitch dark, scary. Now, imagine this. They turned out the lights and they couldn't turn back on. How would you feel? Yeah. Okay. You feel. You would feel scared. You feel scared. But if then someone gave you a flashlight, how would you feel? You'd be very. You'd be happy. You'd be relieved. You'd be thankful. You'd be comforted. Right. So listen to this. Jesus is our light or our lamp out of the darkness, right? And so this, this time of year, we are celebrating Jesus taking on flesh and becoming our light of the world so we could, be, we could have a relationship with God again that Adam broke with sin, right? So we're going to go in Luke chapter 1. Faith, you point to Luke to remind everybody that they can find this story in their Bibles. And it's probably a very familiar story for you guys. You probably know this story. So last week you heard about Zachariah and Elizabeth. We're going to have a baby boy named John the... Yep, he's Jesus' cousin, right? So this week we're talking about Mary. And we want you guys to feel like you're right in the story, okay? So who has read this book series before? There's two different ones. Magic Treehouse? Yep. 
Uh, we were there. Who's read We Were There? I actually never read that one when I was a kid. But Faithy did. Faithy did. <clears throat> so, picture yourself, and you're, uh, you know, you're a kid growing up in a little kind of boring town. Um, do you guys know uh, where Mary lived? Anybody know? Anybody guess? Bethlehem! Bethlehem is a good guess, but it's actually wrong. Bethlehem! Yeah? Who's got this for me? Shout it out if you know it. Nazareth! Nazareth! Okay, Mary's hanging on to little Nazareth. And you can see this lady, she's working on her iPad, and this lady's playing PS4. And this lady is, uh... oh wait, no, they didn't have any of that stuff. They had to just kind of make up their own games. Life was pretty quiet. They were probably do their study. You know, they studied the Word of God. They studied, like, <clears throat> the stuff that Moses wrote down. They would study that. And you remember Daniel and Isaiah and those guys? Mary would study that kind of stuff. And so it was quiet. She was a teenager, but she was, she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Okay, you guys got it. So at this moment in the story... We're going to have faith you get one over here, faith. You got blue first, right? So Mary was hanging out at her house, probably doing something like you see up on the screen there. And, uh, oh, we have a picture of what her house would look like, too. Let's show that real quick. Whose house looks like that here? No? Nobody? Some stone. You got a dirt driveway. You got a carport there. You think you keep? You think Mary kept her car under that little outside? Oh no, she had a car. Probably, maybe that was the donkey port. The donkey port. Yeah, so, Mary is imagining, you know, it's going to be her time to get married, and she has no idea though at the time that this is about to be. She's about to be part of God's larger plan, right? God is going to use Mary in his, in his mysterious and amazing plan, right? And let's peel this away and see what we got here. All right. Can you guys tell that's the silhouette of Mary? Cool. Okay, so Mary's just hanging out. Thank you, Faithy. Oh, you know what? You can start doing the next one, too. So Mary's hanging out. Going through her regular day, and she's maybe hanging out in her room, and then she feels like someone's in the room with her. And she, have you ever had that feeling when you get like a tingling in the back of your neck, or the hair on your arm stands up? Yeah. Paint it nice and nice and thick around those edges so the silhouette shows up good. Good job. And so. Oh, you guys know what's going to happen next in the story? How would you feel? Somebody that, so turn around, somebody that's not bigger than a man, like ginormous, like glowing, and you're there, how would you feel? Scared. Scared? Yes. Surprised? Those are all, yes. You feel all those things. So this big, strong, powerful man is standing there, glowing. So... Now, this is the same angel that appeared to Zechariah and Elizabeth. For what was his name? Gabriel. Gabriel. Okay, let's reveal Gabriel here. Hey, that's cool. That is cool. So, this is Gabriel. And here's what Gabriel says. He says, Greetings, favored woman. Greetings. Okay, what's up? And Mary is like, um, you know what? She's kind of a thinker. You know, I like to imagine if, if it were Peter, uh, if it were Peter, remember how Peter was kind of like, he was kind of a spaz where he just, Make it a, you know, he would just make a decision without really thinking about it and do something. But Mary kind of liked to think about things and pondered in her heart. And she probably wondered, 
What does that mean that I'm highly favored? Greetings, highly favored woman. She was, that, she was highly favored because God was about to use her to give birth to our Savior, right? Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Could you imagine? So she was confused, probably a little bit, but she didn't respond like, you guys remember Daniel? Remember Daniel from the lion's den? And, and Shadrach, Meshach, and, and the fire? You know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you guys remember how Daniel reacted when he saw an angel? He fainted like, like as though he were dead. But Mary, Mary was curious. Okay, so let's read what uh, Gabriel, we know she was afraid a little bit too, because here's what Gabriel said. Don't be afraid, for you have found favor with God. How about, how about, let's read this one together. This is a really good one to know. Ready? Don't be afraid, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Yes, Luke 1, 30 through 33. So in a moment, Mary's pretty normal day changed her life forever and changed history, right? And so Mary was curious. She was like, hey, how is this supposed to happen? Because I'm not married to Joseph yet, so how am I going to have a baby, right? She was curious, but she had faith. Do you guys remember what happened to Zechariah? Did he believe right away? No. When he, so what happened to him? He couldn't talk. The angel made it so he couldn't talk, right? Until John was born. So, but Mary was different. She believed before it happened that it would happen. She was curious. She was curious. And you know what? She teaches us a lesson there that when we're praying to God, it's okay and it's good to ask questions of God because he'll give you an answer. And here's what Gabriel said. He said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Wow, that's cool. Then this is what Mary said. Here's how she responded. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. So she was like, all right. I'm faithful. Let's go. Let's do this thing. She was willing and obedient. So while with Elizabeth, she went. She went uh, and Mary praised God. So did you guys know Mary wrote a song about this whole thing? And we're going to read part of Mary's song here. She said, oh, how am I? Should I sing it? No. <laughs> no. You don't want me to sing it. Wait, I have an idea. Tyler is back there. We should make him sing. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. And do you know we're part of those generations 2,000 years later that are calling her blessed? Isn't that cool? That's crazy. So... You guys, even though Mary, had she had the baby yet? She hadn't even had the baby yet, but did she have faith that it would happen? Yes. Who wants to have faith like Mary? I know I do. Yeah. We can give praise and thanks to God for something that he's promised, but it, even though it hasn't happened yet. You know, there was another guy in the, in the very beginning of the Bible that had that kind of faith. Moses had that kind of faith, but even before him... Abraham, you're right, Madeline. Abraham had faith that God would do what he said he would do. So, we're going to, here we go, Faithy. Let's do our last one here. Make a nice, thick painting around that stencil. Okay, so, I'm going to ask you guys these questions. What does your faith look like? Do you believe God like Mary did? Do you know you can be 100% confident that God will keep his promises? 
Do you know what his promises are? Do you know what his promises are? He will come back. You know what his promise is? And he's faithful to. Uh, we're going to do the ABCs of faith here. He's faithful that if you admit that you are a sinner, admit that you are a sinner, right? And you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, right, to fix our sin problem, and you call on him to be Lord of your life, that you will be saved. So Jesus came, he became a man, he lived a perfect life, he died a death on the cross, and by his shed blood on the cross, we are not like we were back when Adam sinned, right? Now we have a chance to be reconciled to God, right? So who has done those ABCs and made their decision to follow Jesus? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Who is thinking about making that decision to follow Jesus? Awesome, yes, let's see those hands. If you're thinking about making that decision, you can come talk to me, you can talk to Miss Marissa, you can talk to your parents, your teachers. It's the most important decision that you will ever make, for sure, you guys. So now, should we do our reveal here? It, what, oh, you guys can tell, it's the cross? Nice. Jesus, that is, Jesus died on the cross for us. Faithy, should we give Faith a hand? Good job on the painting. Good job, honey. Okay, let me pray for us and then we'll do announcements. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, your precious Savior. Lord, thank you so much for just this, the way that you put together this story with the angel. With, uh, with using a little servant girl, a normal kid, just like one of the kids in this room today, Lord, that you would use her to, to bring Jesus into human flesh and to take on humanity and, and to die a death for us, to pay the price that we should have paid, that we can have eternal life and we can be right with God. We thank you for that. And we're going to celebrate that all this Christmas season. And Lord, I pray that each one of these kids would go and share that with their families and their friends and the people that are visiting them over Christmas, that they would share what, what Christmas is all really about. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.